Uh, now we're going to have Chris Zimney, and Chris is uh, Staff Chief Environmental and Cultural Resources Protection for CAL FIRE. And uh, Chris is going to talk about uh, the CAL FIRE's Kashia program. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Chris, and I'll, and I'll, go, I'll go away. Okay. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, how's the audio? Okay. Sounds fine to me. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, thanks for everybody for coming on. Um, I, uh, Richard and Susie have done a great job on these uh, these webinars, and uh, um, you know Cal Fire has been a, uh, had excellent partnerships with SAF and uh, University of California Cooperative Extension. Uh, you know partners for delivering many of these uh, professional um, webinars and curriculum. So we really really thank you and value that partnership, and hope we can continue it in the future. As Richard mentioned, uh, I am Christy Zimney. I'm a Staff Chief for Environmental Protection uh, at Sacramento Headquarters in CAL FIRE. Uh, that covers uh, CAL FIRE's vegetation treatment program. It's, it's, uh, it's vegetation fuel hazard prevention work. Uh, it's uh, environmental compliance work and uh, our archaeological program. Um, in my recent former career where I was working uh, with the forestry assistance programs that well, we'll be talking about in detail uh, today. One of those forestry assistance programs is called the California Forest Improvement Program, and uh, we will focus uh, on that. The uh, California Forest Improvement Program is for private land, um, for private land owners, non-federal lands, and uh, so that has been our uh, critical piece in helping get some of these reforestation activities going. Um, just to address quickly before I start uh, a couple of the questions we were just talking about, uh, the U.S. Forest Service uh, does provide uh, periodically and sometimes annually um, some limited funding uh, to CAL FIRE through uh, the Forest Service's uh, state and private uh, forestry section. Um, and so CAL FIRE does get some funding. So, for example, uh, right now we have um, about $100,000 uh, that we received from the um, U.S. Forest Service Region 5 uh, for uh, reforestation activities, and we are focusing that funding on uh, using those to uh, get some of the cone and seed stock uh, replenished uh, in our uh, seed bank. Uh, we currently are not using uh, that funding for reforestation uh, to, to private landowners. Okay, uh, with that, um, I just the last thing I want to mention as a, as a primer here, um, my longtime colleague here, Jeff Calvert, has uh, uh, recently been promoted to the um, Deputy Chief of the Forestry Assistance Programs, and uh, maybe many of you know Jeff, um, longtime forester, private landowner, and uh, a real ace uh, with the CFIP program, and uh, you'll see his contact info uh, at the end. Okay. Um, I suppose that um, those of you maybe who are private landowners uh, have had this uh, unfortunate bad news uh, happen on your property, uh, obviously a devastating uh, change to your land. Uh, if there is any good news, uh, I suppose that uh, there are real opportunities and sound forestry practices to get one's land back in production and uh, get it into a fully functioning forest. You can see here is an example of what, what can be done in just a, uh, well, relatively short period of time, uh, 14, 15 years uh, after the fire where trees were reforested on high site land in uh, Yuba County, and the, uh, the restoration pro uh, process is underway. So what I'm going to primarily talk about is the CFIP program. Um, again, CFIP is one of several of CAL FIRE's uh, forestry assistant programs. Uh, uh, CAL FIRE also has uh, urban forestry uh, uh, grant programs, uh, a seed bank uh, that we've talked about, and also has a forest health program where we have uh, plant pathologists and entomologists and technical experts around the state to uh, assist landowners. So we're going to be talking about the, the California Forestry Improvement Program, and that's one of our forestry assistance programs here at CAL FIRE. The fundamental premise for, um, for the CFIP program is that it is a cost share program, uh, and it is for uh, private landowners of limited size. Uh, the cost share concept means that uh, the state, CAL FIRE, 
will pay for a portion of the cost and the landowner must pay for a portion of the cost of the reforestation and other activities. Um, the typical maximum rate for this program is about $50,000 that could be reimbursed uh, to the landowner. And again, we talked about that the, the program intent was for relatively small non-federal uh, forest landowners um, with a 5,000 acre maximum ownership uh, through uh, all ownerships in the state. The CFIP program has been around for a while. Uh, the authority came through law, state law, in 1978. Uh, and some of the key uh, intents and uh, whereas is in the legislation was the recognition that uh, there is a substantial need for reforestation. Um, back in 1978 there was, uh, and certainly today there still is. As my colleague uh, Steve Smith will talk about uh, a little bit, and maybe we've talked about on the, the webinars before, uh, there is a substantial backlog of private land that we're well aware of uh, and even some of our uh, GIS modeling has suggested that there's millions of acres of private land, uh, one, two, three million acres of private land that uh, is either understocked or poorly stocked or hasn't been regenerated um, following some of the uh, harvesting activities or uh, wildfire pest uh, situations. The, uh, the state law allows CAL FIRE to uh, enter into an agreement uh, with a landowner to uh, provide them this funding under the CFIP program. And again, uh, the purpose is for the state and the landowners to work together uh, to get these mutual environmental benefits uh, back in place and get a functioning forest going. The uh, CFIP program, um, you can see in these bullets, uh, allows uh, for a variety of, uh, of treatments to be done and a variety of activities uh, to be done. Um, it's more than just a reforestation uh, cost share program. Uh, you can see there's things uh, that landowners might be interested in doing once those trees are in the ground for some years, including commercial thinning and pruning, and uh, also some restoration activities uh, for creeks and other areas. But the primary things that we're talking about are really for the CFIP program for reforestation or about these first uh, five activities, the management plan, the supervision, site prep, trees, tree planting, and uh, tree shelters. So those are the activities that we're going to focus on today as part of the, uh, the CFIP program and with, with the reforestation activities. Um, again, the CFIP is a cost share program, and uh, I guess the good news of it is that uh, CAL FIRE will cover uh, up to 90% in some cases of uh, a pre-established cost that's allowed to be paid for these activities. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but it's, it's, uh, it's not that we're paying 90% of the actual cost to you, landowner, of the activity. Uh, we have a, an established rate set up, and we will pay 90% of that cost. Uh, some of the activities are 75% uh, of the total cost, of the, uh, of the cap cost, the, uh, the pre-established cost. Just a little uh, background um, about the program and, uh, and where we are. Uh, there used to be, as we were talking earlier, a functioning uh, CFIP program when there was a steady steam stream of uh, revenues and uh, uh, authority to use those revenues coming from our demonstration state forests. Uh, that for a number of reasons uh, stopped some years ago and thus the funding for uh, reforestation for small private landowners uh, was greatly reduced to um, a few thousand acres and currently uh, no funding for the reforestation aspects uh, of CFIP. Um, simultaneously, though, uh, we have spent uh, millions of dollars uh, in the recent years, both state funding and through um, funding that came from the Forest Service to CAL FIRE for fuels reduction, meaning getting the, uh, the excess vegetation off your land to reduce wildfire hazards 
and for forest thinning, for forest health, and uh, uh, other forest improvement purposes. So CAL FIRE has been extremely active, almost exclusively, uh, with uh, the fire hazard reduction and the forest thinning using the CFRIP uh, contracts, and literally millions of dollars over the last uh, few years have been applied to that. The good news, and I guess this is one of my take-home messages for you, is that there is a potential uh, for new funding to come into CAL FIRE to provide uh, reforestation uh, through the CFIP program. Uh, the governor in his budget uh, has uh, identified uh, something called the cap and trade funding. Uh, it's a state source of money that the Air Resources Board uh, collects through auctions of uh, carbon credits and uh, the the uh, state, the governor, allocates uh, those funds for various purposes that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, of course, we believe that uh, reforestation, the, the, the growing of trees, the uh, carbon that uh, grows and sequesters uh, atmospheric CO2 uh, is a great way uh, for us to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and also have uh, lots of other co-benefits associated with uh, forested areas. The uh, funding could be substantial. Uh, again, none of this is certain. It could be a big zero by the time we get there, but uh, for now uh, we have uh, some indications that the potential funding uh, could come. Uh, this type of funding uh, could provide uh, reforestation on um, private land uh, to the tune of over uh, perhaps 2,000 uh, 2, acres. And CAL FIRE is looking at uh, some partnership opportunities uh, to help uh, deliver the program. Um, the main message is CAL FIRE it does have a substantial amount uh, of foresters, but uh, when you think of the size of the state, uh, we maybe have uh, literally one forester per county uh, that can assist you with these programs and getting uh, the cost share agreements going and the inspections and all those type of things. And, uh, Sometimes we're unable to uh, get our staff going because they're spread thin on other things. And so we're contemplating working with the uh, local RCDs um, to help um, get the money to landowners in a cost share basis. We've had some success for that, a good track record of that uh, with our fuel reduction funding that we've used for several years now where the RCDs have helped out. And that's turned out to be a real efficient way. So um, I think that's the main message is that uh, there is some hope, but um, that's, that's all it is right now. Um, like every good government process, um, there is a rather long uh, user's guide for CFIP. And uh, everything that I guess uh, I know or I'm saying, uh, you can read about uh, in, uh, in quite a bit more detail. You can see the website. And this document gives you the, uh, the terms and conditions and the, uh, the nuances and the paperwork and the applications and uh, all of the, uh, the pieces that go together to get uh, state funding for the purposes we're talking about. So um, you can easily find that. Uh, it's about a 75-page document with example forms and such, and uh, you should be able to get a lot more information out of that. So let's talk about... Uh, really how, how this goes down in terms of getting a, uh, a CFIP agreement from, uh, from CAL FIRE. One of the most important uh, first steps is getting a registered professional forester. A registered professional forester is a person who has received uh, an examination, has taken an examination and received a, lion, uh, a license uh, issued by the State Board of Forestry and Fire Protection. Uh, that CFIP um, that registered professional forester is a required part of the program to uh, work with the individual landowner uh, to develop the terms and conditions and the specifications for the project. In addition to pro providing you technical advice, the, the RPF uh, is a good resource for landowners who are less familiar with forestry and the purposes of their land, uh, uh, absentee landowners, for example. Uh, to really determine their objectives and their needs and make assessments uh, of the property and get some technical advice on what good things uh, they would like to have done based on the landowner's uh, objectives. 
one of the first uh, steps that uh, RPF and the landowner do is uh, apply, get an application for the CFIP program. Uh, once the application is filled out, you would submit it to CAL FIRE, um, the forestry assistant specialist, and I just think we are lucky as can be to have one of our forestry assistant specialists, um, I think, on our webinar today, and that's Jill Butler. Jill is a longtime experienced uh, forestry assistant specialist uh, out of the um, Mendocino County area and has great experience in uh, a lot of these CFIP processes, and uh, so Jill is a great resource. And again, thank you, Jill, for participating and listening in. Um, so the, you would get your application to your forestry uh, specialist. Um, if we use a CFIP administrator, meaning an RCD, the application uh, would also go to the, uh, to the RCD. Uh, the project has to be uh, approved by uh, CAL FIRE or CFIP. There are um, eligibility criteria that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, but that's the next step is get it approved. Once it is approved, the landowner and the RPF uh, will fill out uh, a CFIP agreement. Um, it's a pretty standard form that talks about uh, who and what and, and how much. And um, that's the beginning point of, um, of executing your cost share agreement. And once that is completed, uh, you get the okay to work and, uh, and away you go on your project. With all um, CFIP project, one has to have a management plan for their property. We think management plans are essential uh, documents that um, uh, include the landowner's uh, objectives and some of the physical and biological and, um, and activities that the landowner and the uh, wants to do and that the RPF uh, helps develop. So a management plan would be prepared and completed. It is an item that uh, we reimburse for. And so uh, for reforestation, uh, there, there are a couple different types of management plans, a, a full uh, and complete management plan that, that uh, both us and uh, NRCS use uh, cooperatively. Um, that can be reimbursed uh, several thousands of dollars, or there is a mini management plan that is very quick and easy to get through if you are in a, an emergency situation, such as we often are with uh, reforestation after wildfires. And fundamentally, uh, one implements the work. Uh, the landowner and its RPF uh, typically hire local contractors uh, to do the work. Uh, the landowner typically uh, pays for the contractor's work, keeps the receipts. Uh, CAL FIRE uh, is then requested to come out and field inspect, and then the landowner or the RPF would submit uh, payment uh, with the receipts that you paid your contractors and your foresters uh, for your seedlings or whatever expenses you do incur, uh, and uh, the reimbursement from CAL FIRE or the CFIP administrator begins. And that's, uh, that's how it's supposed to go. Um, we talked a little bit about the, um, the selection criteria. Um, the, often we have, um, for some of our programs, lots of competing demands, lots of uh, project uh, applications come in or are sitting on the shelf, good, worthy projects. And so sometimes uh, not everything can be, can be awarded. And so, the procedures uh, for allocating uh, the CFIP funds when there is a, a greater demand than the funding uh, are established. They talk about uh, things about the potential benefits and the improvements that are going to happen, uh, uh, lands that are substantially damaged by fire, uh, certainly are given preference to uh, getting CFIP uh, funding. Uh, other concurrent values that are identifiable in the project are also recognized in statute as uh, an important selection criteria. Projects that are on highly productive land, uh, land that uh, will grow uh, crops of trees more rapidly than lands that are of shallower soils or in a rougher territory, for example, um, would be uh, uh, less, to, less to preference uh, for this program. Uh, the program, the, the, uh, the project uh, needs to contribute to local employment, small business participation, 
And these last two, seven and eight, are uh, a couple factors that uh, aren't the statutory re limitations or uh, project evaluation criteria, but they're the reality checks for CAL FIRE. Uh, our staff, uh, we talked about, are, are limited. Uh, they are, there's not uh, enough of them to do all the things that we do do. And so if one particular area as foresters is, um, is very busy or has a, quite a backlog, um, they would be less inclined to go ahead and uh, approve projects. And finally, um, almost with everything that CAL FIRE does, uh, we're looking for consistency with our unit fire plan. A unit fire plan is something that CAL FIRE prepares in cooperation with uh, other fire agencies and communities um, throughout the state. Uh, that talks about uh, the wildfire conditions and the suppression activities and often identifies uh, projects that would be critical for, uh, for fuel hazard reduction and for uh, other purposes. So uh, consistency with a fire plan is always one of the factors we're going to, uh, to look at when we talk about uh, vegetation uh, treatments such as site preparation and fuel hazard reductions and subsequent plant, uh, planting. We talked a little bit about one of the first things that you're going to need is a management plan. Um, a management plan uh, is uh, a large document uh, or it can be a very small document, but they are valuable records for the landowners. These things are done in cooperation with their professional foresters. They are a valuable record uh, for the landowner to fully document uh, his conditions, his desires, uh, uh, his, uh, his legacy uh, intentions on that land. This, this document is for the landowner and it gives a, uh, a good opportunity to make sure that uh, the landowner's wishes are thought through and that uh, um, reasonable practices uh, worthy of state funding uh, are being conducted on the land. And as we talked about, um, Cal Fire often pay uh, quite a bit of the portion of the preparation of, uh, of that plan. So getting down to the money thing, um, there we talked about cap rates. Cap rates are pre-established uh, rates by the State Board of Forestry and Fire Protection uh, for each of the activities uh, that are typically needed uh, and allowed for under the CFIP program. So you can see some of the activities in that first column maybe uh, management plan, RPF supervision, site prep, tree planting, tree shelters, all of those um, activities have a, a certain cap cost. Here's the maximum that CAL FIRE will pay for those activities. Most of them are on a per acre basis. When you take 90% or 75% of that, you can see what the landowner might be receiving in return and uh, concurrently you can, can see how much this would cost uh, the landowner. Um, not too difficult on a uh, steep land with lots of site preparation to get close to $1,000 uh, per acre cost for doing the complete project from management plan to, uh, to getting the trees in the ground and providing shelters for them. Uh, but that's about as far as it goes right now as far as the maximum rates um, that CAL FIRE would pay 90 or 75% uh, of. And this table is in that user guide that I previously mentioned if you'd like to see the details on that. And so uh, that's where we're at. Uh, and again, I mentioned that uh, Jeff Calvert, uh, one of our longtime foresters here and a, a real expert with private landowners, um, is available uh, here at headquarters uh, to answer any questions about the programs. Uh, Jeff, will, Jeff sees every, every CFIP project that comes from our our unit forestry assistant um, specialist, and so uh, Jeff is a great resource for that. Okay, that's it, Richard. Thank you. Well, thanks, Chris. Uh, I have one question, maybe uh, just before we get the other questions. Um, how can people track the progress of this cap and trade um, deal that you were talking about? Will there be some kind of a public announcement, or would Jeff be able to provide that information, or how? How would people know, you know when reforestation funds may become available? Right. The, the, the process for the cap-and-trade funds uh, tracks the process of the governor's state budget. 
And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, recently we've had state budgets uh, beginning for the f state fiscal year of July 14th, uh, July 2014, July 1st, uh, that are actually on time. Um, one of the benchmarks for our, uh, state government and the governor's budget is um, a May 15th revise, meaning uh, the, um, the various uh, legislative um, committees and other analysts in the state uh, have reviewed the government, uh, reviewed the governor's budget and has made recommendations and the governor may revise his initial budget that came out uh, in January uh, in May. Uh, those are standalone. Um, boy, it's tough to tell what's going on with those processes. When we have information, uh, we will certainly be posting it on the CAL FIRE website uh, about uh, whether we're approved and, uh, and for what and, uh, and when funding will be available. Hey, uh, I'm going to bring the questions into the middle here, Susie, if that's okay with you. Um, okay. So, uh, Andy is a real advocate. I don't know who he is, but he sounds like he, he wants to advocate reforestation. Uh, he's asking whether there's been any, uh, essentially, a, an evaluation of how much CFIP reforestation funding would be adequate to meet that backlog or to even meet the current demand. Well, the, 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 uh, the amount of money needed for uh, you know a million acres is uh, is a lot of money. Uh, the you know at a thousand bucks uh, an acre, we can do the arithmetic on that. We're not talking about that kind of money. Uh, the more reality is uh, some funding uh, consistent with the ability for uh, the entire industry, in a sense, including cow fire, including nurseries, including professional foresters, uh, including planting and, uh, and cone collection contractors, to be able to deliver that. Um, we felt initially that uh, somewhere around 2,000 acres would be a target that perhaps that uh, might be realistic for us to uh, uh, attack over a, a few year period and should uh, funding continue uh, we would be able to likely uh, provide uh, funding um, at that level, maybe a couple thousand uh, acres uh, over a couple three-year period. Hmm. Uh, Lorna, she's going to ask you about where the SRA money is going. Can it be used for uh, CFIP, for example? The SRA money is for pretty specific uh, purposes, and that purpose is, is for uh, the intention of the legislation, which is uh, to return the money for fire prevention projects um, in the areas uh, from which the money came. Uh, right now, um, that means uh, a few things to CAL FIRE. That means primarily uh, fuel hazard reduction, meaning vegetation removal uh, in areas that are near infrastructures. That means public education uh, programs. Uh, and that means um, defensible space inspections to meet for landowners uh, to comply with the law for vegetation removal around their homes. So um, currently, uh, that is not the, uh, the short-term uh, intended use of the funding. It's, it's not for reforestation at this point. Okay. Um, Brent's asking if funds are available for thinning projects, and presumably they are. That would fit in with your fuel reductions, right? Yes, the, uh, the, the funding for, quote, fuel hazard reduction uh, came in a big way over the last uh, two or three years from uh, the state's uh, Proposition um, 40, uh, boy, watershedding community improvement funding, I'm butchering the term there, the name of that law, where you literally had uh, our last uh, funding amount from Prop 40 was uh, nearly $5 million uh, to do uh, solely fuel hazard reduction. That money was allocated. Uh, that pro program uh, close, uh, closes here uh, literally in, in a month, um, and so that work is complete. And that was our largest source of funding that we had for uh, fuel hazard reduction, uh, and that money was often uh, targeted to directly to landowners through one of our RCD partners, and much of it was also given to uh, Cal Fire, uh, excuse me, to the uh, 
to uh, local fire safe councils to implement it on behalf of CAL FIRE. There is a possibility in the cap and trade funding for additional fuel hazard <coughs> reduction funding that could include thinning. Um, and he's also asking if he uh, has any ability to apply for funding to, to treat 100 acres he had burned in the 2008 Yuba complex. Yeah, uh, we, we are not, uh, we're not going to fund any new applications for uh, the fuel hazard reduction at this point. Uh, since the Proposition 40 pro program is closed. Now, what I would say is this, though. Get ahead of this thing. Uh, it is worthy to uh, begin uh, gathering your paperwork, perhaps uh, uh, thinking about the CFIP program and, uh, and your needs. Uh, if you can uh, afford it, uh, recruit um, a, uh, a registered professional forester to, uh, to help prepare uh, and think through your needs for that property and to begin contacting your local uh, uh, CAL FIRE forestry assistant uh, advisor to perhaps get the plan on the shelf uh, and uh, state your case. Uh, Jack is asking about uh, what, what the requirements are to be a reforestation contractor, presumably a, breach, a contractor's license, right? Uh, I don't know what the answer uh, to that is. Uh, uh, certainly uh, um, having uh, probably a pesticide applicator's uh, license, and, um, but, but I don't know what the other uh, you know, minimum qualifications are or, frankly, uh, a list of, uh, of those that are widespread throughout the state. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions for Chris? Well, Doc, uh, Chris, thanks so much for uh, providing the information. Uh, I uh, think it would be really interesting to be able to uh, follow and track the cap and trade uh, funding source. And I hope that you guys will put out a, a uh, you know, a public a public announcement on that when when we finally know what's going to happen. Okay. So. Um,